Before I get down to business and read some of the Sumerians' documentation of what may have been a real series of actual events in our cosmos, let me say that these are the translations of Zechariah Sitchin. This is his work, his life's work, in fact. I'm going to read from the Lost Book of Enki, copyright 2002 by Zechariah Sitchin, published by Baron Company, a division of Inner Traditions International. The purpose of this reading is purely informational and or educational. There are no profits, money, or other benefits which flow from this reading. In fact, I would suggest you go and buy this book. It is available for your iPhone, and it's really excellent. Um, let's see here. I also want to say that in the Lost Book of Enki, we're going to read the second tablet. This is the section where we have Alalu. Alalu was the king on Nibiru, but in a festival of grappling and naked public combat, you know, he lost to Anu. So as Tablet 2 opens, Alalu is shamed. He's heading for his celestial boat. Um, as he's getting into his boat, he's sort of thinking about some place that he knows of where there's a lot of gold. Gold is needed to create a shield around Nibiru to protect its atmosphere, which apparently has collapsed or is gone or what have you. Sound familiar? The particles of gold are vital for Nibiru. So if somebody finds gold, they're going to be like the hero. So this is kind of like one of those you know, wait till they see me and I'll show them. So Alu hops into his boat, he's headed for the gold, and he's planning on being the dude. So here we go. To snow-hued earth, Alalu set his course. By a seeker from the beginning, he chose his destination. To regions forbidden, Alalu made his way. No one has gone there before. No one at the hammered bracelet, a crossing, had attempted. A secret from the beginning, Alalu's course has determined. The fate of Nibiru in his hands, it placed by a scheme his kingship to make universal. On Nibiru, exile was certain. That was because he lost to Anu. There, death itself he was chancing. In his scheme, risk was in the journey. Eternal glory of success was the reward. Riding like an eagle, Alalu the heavens scanned. Below, Nibiru was a ball in a voidness, hanging. Alluring was its figure, its radiance emblazoned the surrounding heavens. Its measure was enormous, its belchings fire blazed forth, its life-sustaining envelope, that would be the gold. Its hue, a redness, was like the sea churning. That's why you often see the beer pictured as having a red glow around it. That's the gold. In the midst, the breach was distinct, like a darkened wound. There's a break in the shields. He looked down again. The wide breach turned into a small tub. He looked again. Nibiru's great ball turned into a small fruit. The next time he looked in the wide dark sea, Nibiru had disappeared. Remorse the heart of Alalu grasped. Fear held him in its hands. Decision to hesitation turned. To halt in his tracks, Alalu considered. Then from audacity to decision, he returned. So he's going forward to find that goal. A hundred leagues, a thousand leagues, the chariot was coursing. Ten thousand leagues, the chariot was journeying. In the wide heavens, darkness was the darkest. In the faraway, distant stars, their eyes were blinking. More leagues, Alalu traveled. Then a sight of great joy met his gaze. In the expanse of the heavens, the celestial's emissary was greeting. Little Gaga, the one who shows the way, by its circuit, Alalu was greeting. To him, a welcome extending. For the record, Little Gaga is now Pluto, we think. Little Gaga was once Saturn's moons, or well, one of Saturn's moons. So as Alalu is entering the scene, He's seeing little Gaga, who at the time was revolving around Saturn. With a leaning gate before and after the celestial Antu, it was destined to travel. Antu is quite possibly Neptune. So with a leaning gate before and after the celestial Antu, it was destined to travel. 
to face forward to face backward with two facings was it endowed. Its appearance as first to greet Alalu was a good omen he at once considered. By the celestial gods he is welcome, so was his understanding. In his chariot, Alalu followed Gaga's path to the second god of the heavens it was directed. Soon, Celestial Antu, its name by King Enshar, was given. Again, Antu is Neptune, we think. Darkness was looming. Blue as pure waters was her view. Of the upper waters, she was the commencement. Alalu, by the sight's beauty, was enchanted. To course at a distance, he continued. In the far beyond Antu's spouse began to shimmer. The size Antu's the equal. So he's seeing something that's kind of like Antu. As his spouse's double by a greenish blueness was N distinguished. We're thinking here that N is probably Uranus or Uranus if you prefer. A dazzling host encircled it was on its side with firm grounds they were provided. To the two celestials, Alalu bade fond farewell, the path of Gaga still discerning. The way it was showing to its olden master, of whom it was once the counselor, to Anshar, the foremost prince of the heavens, the course was a turning. By the speeding chariot, Alalu, the ensnaring pull of Anshar could tell. So he was being pulled into Saturn. By the speeding chariot, Alalu, the ensnaring pull of Anshar could tell. With bright rings of dazzling colors, this chariot, it was enchanting. Bright rings, dazzling colors. Sad. His gaze, Alalu, to one side quickly turned. That which shows the way, with might, he diverted. A sight most awesome then to him appeared. In the faraway heavens, the family's bright star he discerned. A sight most frightening the revelation followed. A giant monster in its destiny moving. Upon the sun, a darkening cast. Kishar, its creator, swallowed. Kishar is possibly Jupiter. Frightening was the occurrence. An evil omen, Alalu indeed thought. The giant Kishar, foremost of the firm planets, its size was overwhelming. Sounds like Jupiter. Swirling storms obscured its face. Colored spots, they moved about, a host beyond counting. Some quickly, some slowly, the celestial god encircled. Troublesome were their ways. Back and forth, they were surging. Yes, it does sound like Jupiter to me. Kishar itself, a spell was casting. Divine lightnings it was thrusting. As Alalu looked on, his course became upset. His direction was distracted. His doings became confused. Then the deepness darkening began to depart. Kishar on his destiny continued to circuit. Slowly moving its veil from the shining sun it lifted. The one from the beginning came fully into view. Joy in Alalu's heart was not long lasting. Beyond the fifth planet, the utmost danger was lurking, so indeed he knew. The hammered bracelet, some sort of asteroid belt perchance. The hammered bracelet ahead was raining, to demolish it was awaiting. Of rocks and boulders was it together hammered, like orphans with no mother they banded together. Surging back and forth, a bygone destiny they followed. Their doings were loathsome, troubling were their ways. Nibiru's probing chariots, like praying lions, they devoured. The precious gold needed for the surviving, they refused to dislodge. The chariot of Alalu towards the hammered bracelet was headlong moving. The ferocious boulders in close combat to boldly face. Alalu, the firestones in his chariot, were more strongly stirred up. That which shows the way, with steady hands he directed. The ominous boulders against the chariot charged forward like an enemy in battle attacking. Toward them, Alalu, a death-dealing missile from the chariot let loose. Excuse me, did this 5,000-year-old text just talk about a missile firing from a chariot? Ahem. <clears throat> anyway. Then another and another against the enemy, the terror weapons he thrust. Terror weapons. 
just say it. As frightened warriors, the boulders turn back a path for Alalu granting. So basically, Alalu is in his spaceship and he is blasting through all this crap. Like by a spell, the hammered bracelet, a doorway to the king, it opened. In the dark deepness, Alalu, the heavens could clearly see. By the bracelet's ferocity, he had not been defeated. His mission was not ended. In the distance, the sun's fiery ball, its brilliance was sending forth. Welcoming rays towards Alalu, it was emitting. Before it, a red-brown planet on its circuit was coursing. The sixth in the count of celestial, celestial gods it was. Alalu could but glimpse it. On its destined course from Alalu's path, it was quickly moving. Then, snow-hued earth appeared. The seventh in the celestial count. Again, just so you know, it's the seventh planet that we're on because they were coming from outer space. Yeah, 5,000 year old Sumerian tablet talking about the planets. From the perspective of someone coming from outer space. Again, just saying. The snow hued earth appeared, the seventh in the celestial count. Toward the planet, Alalu set his course. To a, devastation, to a destination most inviting. Smaller than Nibiru was its alluring ball. Weaker than Nibiru's was its attracting net. Its atmosphere thinner than Nibiru's was. Clouds were swirling within. Below the earth to three regions was divided. Snow white at the top and on the bottom, blue and brown in between. Again, 5,000 year old tablet. Below the earth to three regions was divided. Snow white at the top and on the bottom, polar caps, blue and brown in between. It's a view of earth that we didn't think anyone had 5,000 years ago. Just saying. Deathly Alalu spread the chariot's arresting wings around the earth's ball to circle. It's a winged chariot. I don't know, does that sound like a myth or could that be real? I don't know. In the middle region, dry lands and watery oceans, he could discern. The beam that penetrates downward, he directed. That being from his ship, I would imagine. Earth's innards to detect. I have attained it, he ecstatically shouted. Gold, much gold, the beam has indicated. I'm going to back up for a second. Anybody who knows uh, how Harp sort of came about, I'm just going to read that one more time. The beam that penetrates, all of those are capitalized words, so they're talking about a thing. Downward, he directed. Alalu is now shooting a beam down at Earth. This is how he knew that there was gold there and decided to brave the hammered bracelet. It was clearly a journey worth making. Those are my words. I have attained it, ecstatically he shouted. Gold, much gold. From his spaceship, he shot a beam and found gold. It was beneath the dark hued region, in the waters it was too. With pounding heart, Alalu, a decision was contemplating. Shall he on the dry land his chariot bring down, perchance to crash and die? Shall he to the waters his course direct, to perchance into oblivion sink? Which way shall he survive? Will he, will he the treasured gold discover? In the eagle's nest, see, Alalu was not stirring. To fate's hands the chariot he entrusted. Fully caught in earth's attracting net, the chariot was moving faster. Its spread wings became a glow. Earth's atmosphere like an oven was. Then the chariot shook, emitting a mortifying thunder. With abruptness, the chariot crashed, with a suddenness altogether stopping. Senseless from the shaking, stunned by the crash, Alalu was without moving. Then he opened his eyes and knew he was among the living. At the planet of gold, he victoriously arrived. Now this is the account of the earth 
to be continued in the next video.